lecture of quantum mechanics. Uh, in the last lecture, we had learned about uh, the normalization condition uh, and what does it mean and how do we uh, apply it in, to normalize a wave function. In this one, uh, we'll uh, learn about another application of normalization condition. Okay, so application of normalization condition. Right. So we can use this to find the dimensions of wave function in various dimensions. So we can use this, use this method, use it to find the dimension of the dimension of wave function psi in various dimensional space now this is this is what i mean as uh, by dimensional space that is 1d one dimensional two dimensional three dimensional okay so in this space, uh, in each of them, the dimensions of so wave function is different. All right. So uh, let's start with uh, wave function in one D. So in one D, that is one dimension. All right. So in this case, uh, the integral, the uh, normalization condition is given by this. Okay. So this is a normalization condition in one D, right? Now, if we write the dimensional uh, dimensions of each side, on this this side, the dimension we need to find out the dimension of side. So we write down in dimensional notation. This has a dimension of length, which is a line element in 1D. Okay, so this is equal to now this side. This side is dimensionless, so we can write m to the power l as zero, l to the power zero, t to the power zero, where m is the mass, l is the, m, l is the length, and t is the time. So this is this side is dimensionless. All right. So if we rearrange, if we rearrange. Uh, we take L this side, this is L minus 1 and take root of this side, we need only for psi not psi square, so this will be minus 1 by 2. So in 1D, psi, the wave function has a dimension L minus 1 by 2, alright. So you might remember this or you don't need to remember it, you can derive it, always derive it from using the normalization condition. Okay. Similarly, if we do it in 2D, let's write it here. So in 2D, the integral, the normalization condition becomes, it has double integral because there are two dimensions. So this is say the area element. Okay, now in area element, the DS is the area element. Area element. Now you can in Cart in Cartesian we can write in Cartesian we can write ds is equal to dx dy. Now Cartesian by Cartesian I meant the Cartesian coordinates. All right. So if we write down in dimensional form, so this is size square. Now this one this is area element, so it has dx and dy. So this will this will be l. This will have dimension L. So both, if we combine them, you'll have a dimension of L square. This is equal to one. So if we rearrange and take the root, so this is L minus two. It goes this side, and we take a root square root. This is L minus one. So this is the dimension of wave function in two D. Now, the third case. 
we have in 3D, which is three dimension, three dimensional space. Okay, this was two dimensional. Two dimensional space. Now, if we write down the normalization condition in 3D, there should be three integrals because it's three dimensions. So, one integral for each dimension. So, psi square dv, there will be a volume element. Now, dv. Is the volume element dv is the volume element and dv in Cartesian coordinates can be written as dx dy dz. Now, irrespective of the coordinates used, whether it be Cartesian, spherical coordinates, cylindrical coordinates, the volume element in 3D will have the dimension of L cube. So, if we write down in dimensional form, this is this will have l cube this is one now this one this is if you take this this side so this is l minus three by two so this is the dimension of psi in so this is for 1d this is for 2d this one is for 3d now if we try to generalize this idea say the wave the dimension of wave function in d dimensional space it could be 4D or 5D, whatever it is. So in that case, the dimension of psi can be without uh, getting into the details of the calculation. We just try use this whatever we have done earlier. Uh, okay, so we can we can use it this results to formulate this general thing. So what we have is for D dimension, this can be written as L. So if you observe this thing. For 1D, we had on the numerator 1 and in the denominator we had 2. For 2D, we had in the numerator 2 and we had in the denominator 2. And for 3D, we had in the numerator 3 and denominator 2. So in this case, you have D here in the numerator and divided by 2. Now this is for D dimensional space. Alright. So thank you for watching. Have a great day. You, if you find these uh, lectures useful then please uh, like like subscribe and uh, share with your friends